Lance and Steven in the morning. Good morning. <laughs> this is that's your first time seeing that, isn't it? It is. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to more uh, Lance and Steven in the morning. Today we have a very special guest. Aren't they all special? Well, they are. They are, but we don't have guests all that often. This is uh, something fairly new that we're trying. So I heard yeah. Ashley and Nicole were big hits. Though. They were. They yeah. were. We'll, we'll see if you can get the view count up. With, oh, uh, man. With pressure presence. already. Come on. So thank you guys for joining us and those who will be watching later. Uh, lots of fun having you watch um, and add comments and stuff. Today we have with us Pastor Glenn Breitkreitz of CFA which is very special because he's not on social media. Are you, Glenn? Nope. <laughs> so we're dragging him into the quagmire today. Yeah. yeah. So we don't get the social media posts from Glenn that we all know and love, like, uh, you know, uh, what he's doing with his dog or what he's wearing on a particular day, um, how he's styling his hair. Uh, pictures of his food. We don't see those things from Glenn. Uh, and so this is your opportunity to ask him all sorts of invasive personal questions. In the I should probably qualify the not social media thing, but I hear so much of it from everyone else. I don't know if that counts as not being on it. <laughs> he's, he's living vicariously. Vicariously. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So we're, uh, yeah, we're here to interview Glenn, get to yep. know him more. So please comment, ask questions. Well, we got a bunch to ask him too, uh, but we'd love for you to pick his brain about all sorts of things. Yeah. And so Great. while we're waiting for you to type in some questions, say hello to us, all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out here. Let's get this, let's get this thing rolling. Start all right, me. Glenn. Yes. <clears throat> when you were little, hit me. When you were little, who was your favorite superhero and why? Oh, favorite superhero. Well, I, re I remember watching the $6 million man on TV, Steve Austin. Right. And uh, I, I wouldn't say that I was like a comic book kid or whatever. Yeah. I we didn't, didn't have them, didn't buy them, but... Um, but yeah, the ones I remember that I kind of thought was cool, it would be cool to be fast and strong like Steve Austin. Um, he, he had uh, like bionics or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah, the bionic man. Yeah, bionic man. Bionic six million man, dollars, that's right? It only cost $6 million then. Imagine what, <laughs> what he'd be now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, he, yeah, can you believe it only cost $6 million to make him like that? Was yeah. he a close relation to RoboCop? He was the precursor. He's yeah, the sure. precursor to Robocop. All I know is that he was better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. Do, 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 I vaguely remember that show. Yeah. Vaguely. I remember that thing sound effect that they had when he was using his powers. Yeah. Nice. It wasn't that show like around the same time as The Incredible Hulk with um Lou Ferrigno. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I well, think Ferrigno might have come a little later. We we got a question here from Jessica. What got you into pastoring? Oh boy. Um I, God made me. That kind of honestly, my my first my first inclination uh was always I liked helping, loved helping. Uh just like to serve people. Um when I do spiritual gifts tests, it comes out serving first and then there's like three blanks and then everything else. So, um, so it really came from just serving and wanting to serve people and serve the Lord, do what the Lord wanted. And, and God turned that into, into what it's become. Um, I would say against my, he never told me about it. It just kind of evolved. Hmm. And uh, I was just going to fill in at first. Just, just was going to help out a little, just a little while while we were looking for a pastor, and just, yeah, it was, it was, I would say very accidental. Uh, another word would maybe be very more organic. It just kind of evolved, 
into it. And uh, and I I was joking with Russell and Brett the other day, and uh, and Brett says, "How long did it take you to?" One of the boys, I think it was Brett. How long did it take you? Wasn't it just a few years ago you figured out that you might actually be a pastor? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was over fifty <laughs> when I thought I th this might. I, I might not be going back to some other work. I, I might be doing this. You know. there, there, there was always that exit plan until about yeah. Yeah. seven, eight years ago. This might yeah. be my profession. You know, I, I don't like <laughs> to use that, but like, okay, apparently we're doing this. So, yeah. So yeah. De decades in, you're still filling in. and <laughs> Just, just want to help until God finds somebody better or, or that there's a new time or whatever. I've uh, never held to it. Don't, I don't, I don't, uh, don't want, want it or need it, uh, but I enjoy it. I, I enjoy doing what the, I think anytime we're doing what God wants us to do, and that's in any profession, when you feel like you're somewhere where, where you're doing something for God, I think you're a happy person. That's godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm. So, so yeah, I, but, but I think I, I think I, I my dad was a, was a community pastor before he ever pastored a church. He coached ball, he coached hockey. We were in farm things and 4-H clubs and stuff. And people knew my dad and my dad was, you know, he was, he just served people, loved people. And so that was what I grew up watching. And that's what I think the fundamentals of Christianity are. Hmm. And uh, yeah, it's that's the way I see all of us. What your specific role is in, uh, whether you're a doctor, a teacher, or a police officer, or a landscaper, or a farmer, whatever it is you do, when you do it as unto the Lord, that is ministry. There is no, in my mind, there's no differentiation between a pastoral calling and any other calling. Our calling is to Christ, and then we fulfill that within specific spheres of influence and relationship. Mm. So. Cool. Yeah, that's so, awesome. So Glenn, you're you're not native to Grand Prairie. You you're an import. Can you say that? Don't you like First Nations? First I'm not a Grand Prairie first person. Yeah, you're not you're not a you're not a native Grand Prairian. <laughs> okay. That's uh, correct. So so um where did you grow up? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, just just as a qualifying statement, my mom grew up in a house uh out it out near uh, uh la glass okay and so that was my mom's place so i'm sort of uh i i sort of have roots here but i wasn't sure. born here i uh, right. grew up on a farm uh west of wetasquan on highway 13 out towards pigeon lake and on a farm out there yeah wetasquan area and so grew up on the farm loved it there yeah you you grew up on the farm and in typical Superman fashion, even though you didn't read the comic books, uh, you were a little bit of an athlete on that farm, I, I hear. Yeah, sports was always a, a big deal. And in small communities, you know, we played ball, we played fastball, we, you know, at school, we played high school sports and, and school sports and track meets. So just love, love competition, love the test, love the challenge, liked winning. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that was always just pretty, pretty natural, natural to me. And and uh, yeah, did, did my best. Yeah. And um, so you played fast pitch softball. Yeah. And some baseball as well. Is that correct? I tried baseball once we went up. Uh, my future brother in law and I went up to uh, Edmonton one time and played one baseball game. It was weird. It was very it was very different. It's very slow compared to fastball. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah. In fastball, that was the sport we grew up as a community playing. So yeah. our little community of fallen, we won provincial championships and, and so on. We had, we didn't even have enough guys come out to make a full roster. We had 14 guys come out and we won provincials and, and in uh, midget age, we actually went to Canadian championships in uh, Prince Edward Island. So I've been to the Maritimes. Wow. That was, by the way, the Maritimes are spectacular. Prince Edward Island was beautiful. Yeah. So, so great experiences uh, in community by doing that, by growing up together, just as a group of boys growing up in a community, but also great life experiences in traveling, going to tournaments, you know, playing balls, seeing the province and, 
yeah, so it was it was it was really great. And played fastball when I came up here too. Was a, a doorway into meeting tremendous number of people in the community. So many good people in our community, you know, who who love sport, who love activity, and just these are great ways to get to know people. So that was that was the parts I think I enjoyed, but probably the competition the most. Mm, that's really cool. A uh, couple of comments to, to bring up. Uh, just a shout out to Nicole that she also loved the $6 million man show. Wasn't there a $6 million woman too? Was it Lindsay there, Wagner? There was, but it wasn't called the $6 million Bionic woman. woman. Bionic, Bionic woman. woman. She was yeah. probably worth 8 or $10 million. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Jeanette Stone tuning in. I think this is her first time tuning in. And she yeah, picked, yeah, first you picked time the right Jeanette. Hey. <laughs> going up. Hey, hey, Jeanette, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. And that's a troublemaker, just for the record. <laughs> uh, Jessica had another question, too. What's the sharpest edge God has shaved off of you? That's that's a nice invasive question. I like it. Uh, I, th I think the, the need to win, uh, mm -hmm. the need to be right, uh, the Bible talks in John one about about Jesus being full of grace and truth. I I like the truth part, and and I like to win the argument, and I like to win at everything. So that sports thing, you know, was a is a good invasive introduction to this. But I'll tell a little story. I, we were playing in a church slow pitch tournament, and I was used to competitive ball, so I was maybe eighteen or nineteen, and we're playing in this church slow pitch tournament, and so uh, so I hit a ball out into the field and rounded first and was heading towards second. Well, the fielder did a good job, threw it into this lady at second base and she was on the baseline. So I smoked her. Oh man, I think I just, and then the game had to stop. They carried her off the field and, and I won't say exactly what I thought. And I never grew up swearing, but in the back of my mind, in my mind, it was just way to go, Glenn. You are such a butthole. That's what I thought. And, and I just went, wow, where, and it was that God, did God just call me that? And I just realized there's a difference between competition and playing for fun. And, and he, he began to identify when you win and when you have to win at all costs, other people have to lose and look at the price that this lady just came out to play slow pitch in a church tournament and, and I drilled her. So Anyway, so that that was a pretty sharp edge, and it rears its ugly head from time to time. But uh, that that was one of them. There's probably a few things about like temper and intensity and things like that in there. They're all kind of a package deal. There's yeah, there's yeah. nothing there's nothing like a, a church softball tournament to bring the best out of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it wasn't like I wasn't mad at her or anything, no. but I just you know I wasn't. Oh, well, I was a butt. Was no, I, I, I've experienced those tournaments back <laughs> in Newfoundland. It's like, oh my goodness, are we, are we, are we Jesus followers or what are we here? What is this? Well, I, I don't appreciate the insinuation that I wasn't following Jesus. I, I <laughs> if Jesus was umpiring, he'd have called me safe. I, if Jesus was in the baseline, I would have mowed him down too. <laughs> and then I'd have helped him up, and he'd have went nice slide. <laughs> So it's very fitting then Jeanette's comment that she's doing great. Uh, but yeah, takes one to know one being a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's good. Here's another one for you, Glenn. Uh, when it comes to vacation. Yes. Beach, safari, or forest? Forest. Out in the, out in the mountains with a lake and a, camper and a fire and a dog and a fishing rod and a boat or some trails to hike or and, and yeah. is your family there or not there like <laughs> it's up to them <laughs> i i enjoy when they're there um yeah i yeah sharon and i enjoy the getaway the quiet the the peace of it and i love nature i love nature and so yeah Hmm. Well, and your house now is almost like living in a little forest. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. We God gave us that. I mean, God gives us what he knows we love, right? Uh, that's an oasis. That's a, uh, it, it 
feels to us when we come home, it's like driving into a provincial campsite. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we drive off the highway and it's we're close to town. It's a great location, but we're completely surrounded. We have seven acres of trees yeah. around us. And yeah, God gives us an environment where we can thrive and live. And and uh, so and and I growing up in the farm, I love taking care of it. I love mowing lawn. I love landscaping. I love projects like that. I, yeah, as a kid on the farm, you know, in the, in the farmland, we had, uh, we had a lot of, of mowing to do. If I had to do the trimming and the riding mower part, it was 10 hours on a Saturday. So if I could talk my sisters into the riding mower part, she said, Mel, just put on your bikini and you can suntan. Cause she liked, she liked the beach. She probably would have picked the beach. So if I could talk one of the girls into doing the riding mower stuff, uh, if I could do the trimming around all the trees and buildings and stuff in about four hours. So, so that was Saturdays were fun. Nice. Yeah, that was the that was the question I knew, but I know you a little bit, so yeah. I knew that would be your answer to that one. Yeah. yeah. We have Mar Marcelo uh, tuning in as oh, always. Oh, Marcelo! Hey, Greetings. Marcelo! Hey. Hey, Bolivia, we're praying for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we extend our condolences uh, down there to your loss, the, what you guys are going through. I know you've lost precious people and, yeah. and you've been in our prayers these days. So, so Marcelo, God bless you. And thanks for joining us. Ah, that's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. Marcelo, hey, give me a hug, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wants to know when you're, when you're Coming visiting. Up. Okay. <laughs> What, when are you going to go yeah. visit Bolivia, Glenn? Oh, Lance, that's what that's what Marcelo is asking. I think yeah. I think um, I think uh, me and Glenn need to kind of figure out we we'll do this together. Me and him will go down together sometime. And yeah, mm -hmm. I I I think I think you're putting ideas in Debbie's mind. So well, be careful. Debbie and Rhoda. I know, I know, today. I'm stirring the pot here, but. Well, she's she's made comments like she knows she already knows her next uh, Bolivia team. Uh, so, yeah. Well, and here she is, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to interview Marcelo? So that's not a question for Glenn, but uh, yeah. yeah, finish. Yeah, I guess that could almost be next couple weeks here. We could. Would yeah, cool. I would say two weeks from now would be a good time to yeah. do it. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll do it, Debbie. You, you, you relax. We'll get to it. <laughs> hey, Marcello, are you, are you into that? Would you do that, buddy? <laughs> oh, he'd love to come on with me and Lance. For sure he would. Yeah. Throw, uh, throw Glenn the, the wrestling question. <laughs> oh yeah. Wrestling question. Uh, cause we, we said we would do this. If you were a professional wrestler, what would your professor, your professional wrestling name be? <laughs> well, first of all, you know, earlier comments notwithstanding, I am a pacifist. So, so I don't know that I would ever be a professional wrestler. And I don't watch professional wrestling. But, oh, that's a good question. How about sauerkraut? Sauerkraut. <laughs> but oh, no, but no, like no, I, sour, S-O-U-R. I've, I've, I've got a better one. I've got a better one. How about uh, Nacho Padre? Nacho Padre. <laughs> Sometimes when you are a pastor wrestler, you must wear stretchy pants. Yeah. Because so I, I've never it's seen Nacho food. Libre. I've heard You've lots never of seen it Nacho here. Libre? No, everybody oh, loves it up here. I've been Pastor Steven. <laughs> it might not even be enjoyable now, like so much. Well, time. I mean, it's it's gonna be like my princess bride, right? That's the oh you haven't seen Princess Bride? No, I did. Everybody oh. said, "Oh, you need to see Princess Bride." So I saw it. I was like, "Yeah, it's okay." Yeah, yeah, because because the hype was built up so much, Couldn't, and then when you just can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Nacho Libre is is kind of an interesting movie though, because I, I think it's a, a tremendously powerful spiritual metaphor for uh, life in ministry. Yeah, Jack Jack Black is really good at those kinds of movies. <laughs> Jack Black is revolutionizing pastoral yeah, ministry. There, yeah. There's a, there's a layer to his films of like social commentary on the church and yeah. Oh, oh, that too. 
Yeah, I I would say you have to watch. I agree with Nicole. I think you have to watch it, but I I think with the with the awareness that if you don't really enjoy it, that's okay because I feel like it is one of those movies where you had to watch it kind of in that season it came out. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of like like Hot Rod or something like Napoleon that was like Dynamite. Yeah, Same. you watch yeah. those like as a as a teen almost. Well, I did anyway. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'm aging so, all of us. So, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of movies, here's another question to throw at you. Okay. If they were going to make a movie of your life, who would play you and what would the movie be about? Well, obviously Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, practically twin. And uh, what would it be about? Is it a superhero movie or any kind no, of movie? What would it be about? You what tell me. About? It's about your life. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I feel it's like so that popular. deserves a funny answer, but I don't have one. Um, but but Chris, Chris Hemsworth would play you, hey? That's the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, would he would he have to shave his head or maybe Equalizer three? <laughs> <laughs> so that name rings a bell what what was that about that was denzel washington where he's a justice crusader and he expects oh, people right. to live up to the good right. that they're supposed to stand for and and if you don't he kills you <laughs> <laughs> but it could be like the equalizer spiritual version or something i don't know i don't know <laughs> So that actually leads into another good question. Okay. Uh, what pet peeve of yours would you make illegal if you could? Uh, uh, well, first thing that comes to mind as I glance out my window is driving. <laughs> There's a lot of things when I'm driving. Uh, what would... What pet peeve would I make illegal? While you're thinking, I'd just like to interject. I've been, I couldn't remember his name, but I was thinking a lot uh, who I'd get to play you in a movie would be Jason Statham. Oh, yes. He's too crude. He's got a potty. Yeah, he's, well, no. So I watched a movie he was in and he wasn't bad. That was um, The Meg. You seen The Meg? You seen no. that? That's the one with That's the megalodon, the shark. prehistoric shark that they find. Shark, yeah. I'd also like to point out, glad you said butthole on uh, social media here. So it's better than the alternative, Lance. <laughs> and like I said, I don't even think in those terms. So it was kind of shocking to me to, I don't know. I sure hope that wasn't the Lord who called me that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think swears. <laughs> uh that's funny. I have code words. They're sort of near swears. <clears throat> it, it, did you think of a pet peeve? Oh, pet peeve. Uh, no, I forgot about that. You distracted me. Sorry. A pet peeve that I would make illegal. Mm. I knew mine right away. Didn't oh. I, Lance? I was like, well, boom. What was yeah. yours? Oh, littering. Oh. Like, like. That is illegal. You, no, yeah, they don't. You're driving up the road and you see this bag of McDonald's lying on the side of the road. Like yeah. somebody just threw a bag of McDonald's out the window. Yeah. We're yeah. talking like equalizer illegal. Like you no, throw a trash I, out your window and Glenn yeah, comes. Oh, yeah. And... I'd equalize. <laughs> yeah. I was like. If, Pull you if out if through the windshield. and <laughs> People, people think the Justin Trudeau is <laughs> a dictator. If I was ruling the country and somebody threw a bag out the window, I'd chop on a, I'd chop on a hand off. Like that just. That stuff irritates me so much. Yeah. I'm glad true. you're not a professional wrestler. <laughs> you can't litter if you don't have hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, my, mine is simpler, similar. I, 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 what really bugs me is when people use public areas for their own pleasure, you know, what it, whatever it is, public facilities or whatever, and they give no thought to the fact that other people are going to use it, that oh, yeah. it's for other people. So they trash stuff, they wreck stuff, yeah. they leave their garbage behind, they...
go with their quads into a beautiful wetland and just rip the rip the yeah. soil up and 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 it it wrecks the the habitat and so I, I i never thought of myself as an environmentalist but we used to go hunting and camping and snowmobiling and stuff and dad said the goal is to to leave nothing behind mm -hmm. uh, so that it's because when I go out there, I want to feel like I'm someplace nobody else has been. So when people don't recognize their responsibility to maintain the corporate world, you know, like, you know, and I think it's a bigger version maybe of littering or a broader, broader version mm -hmm. of littering. But it really bothers me when when people either don't respect it for themselves or use it for themselves and then just never even think that other people want to come and use that area as well mm, and yeah. they don't want to pick up your pop cans and your garbage and your you know your plastic wrappers and and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. so yeah that that really irritates me mm. graffiti is not my favorite either but some of it yeah. some of it it's become artwork like there are ac acceptable places you know like, like on trains. Trains. yeah like, but some of that is spectacular like oh. man you guys are good I, I enjoy watching a train go by sometimes with some of that graffiti on it. Some of it, I mean, some of it's like, eh, but some of it's like, wow, that's, that's yeah. artistic. Yeah. 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 So I think that's the best answer I can come up with. I'll give you another one later. <laughs> uh, we got another couple of questions here. So Jessica's asking, uh, how did you meet and marry Shannon or Sharon? Sharon. Shannon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. My first marriage to Shannon didn't last long. So yeah uh sharon yeah i saw a picture of sharon uh, a, a friend in watasco and showed it to me and and i said oh she's beautiful tell her i'm want to marry her uh, you know cocky 18 or 19 year old whatever it was and and then we actually met in bible school we wound up going to bible school her brother dwight was there and she came down for a year and we were in the same class and it's pretty pretty easy to fall in love with a beautiful tall blonde long blonde hair and pretty and love the lord like love the lord um so so you met dwight first i met dwight first yeah okay. i lived with dwight i lived with dwight really okay yeah cool awesome so that so was you, 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 did not know. your uh bridal college statistic yeah <laughs> that's nicole. that's exactly what nicole just said <laughs> bridal college. i make no apologies for it where else would you want to go and meet someone to marry good grief on the internet come on hey well yeah hey well, well, yeah. <laughs> it's a different day <laughs> uh marcella has a question i'm glad you're feeling the love uh if there was something to remember uh you on the church and at your family in 50 years from now what could it be such as pastor Glenn oh, okay. was great on. Oh, like what's something you want us to remember? Like fifty years from now, what would you want? I think, to I think it's almost just asked this question on Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ask the questions, Marcello. I don't answer them. I don't know. That's a hard question. Um, uh, like I, I've heard this sort of question asked. Like, what would you want written on your tombstone? or at your funeral but what would people say about you yeah yeah uh yeah for for me mine is mine is pretty easy that uh that he was a he was a real christian he's a he was a person who really knew jesus and really lived his faith mm -hmm. wasn't a hypocrite you know wasn't perfect I, we all know that part but i, I don't want any i i don't like the you know the person who's gone being remembered with rose colored. I don't think that helps anybody. Nobody's that perfect and that good, but there are, there are things about honesty and integrity and love and serving others and being about the kingdom and not yourself. Um, I, I think all of that's wrapped up in, in our church theme, which is be with him and be like him. Um, I want to know God and I want to be like him. And if people said that the sum total of my life was he had learned to reflect and show Jesus to others. And it was a true picture of Jesus uh, without too, too many flaws, you know, that the parts that he got right, he got right. Um, that would, that would be a life well lived. That would be a legacy worth leaving. Mm -hmm. cool. 
Yeah. Cool. Good. Well, we've we've eat up 30 minutes here. So that's that's pretty good. If you had a question, now's the time to ask it quick. Before now's, we, now's the time to throw it we, out there quick. We don't know the next time Glenn will be on social media with us again. <laughs> so get it in now. I'm wondering what the, uh, can we do a poll? Uh, the recommendations, who thinks I should stay off social media and who thinks you just really need to get with the times and get with it. So I'm just curious what the masses think. Cause you, most of you have experience. <laughs> and I would seek your counsel, your spiritual counsel and guidance as to whether or not I should dip my toe in the water. Should Glenn be on social media? Um, or should he just stay off of it now? Yeah. Ooh, that's oh, a I've got a second answer for the what should be illegal. Hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not Hypocrisy. allowed to say one thing and do the other. Yeah. And if you get caught, you get heavy fines. Maybe even I don't know about dismemberment. I think that's a little like. Wow. So there'd be there'd be no po politicians. This is right. Hey, hey, hey! That's a tough job those guys have. Those oh, it is. Have. Yeah. But I, I, you know, let's be honest. They say one thing, do another, because once they get in power, it, isn't that it's a, hard. It's that's not a as simple broad as, brush, as isn't it, Steve? It's, isn't that pretty it's not as simple as what people. Here. Hmm? That's a pretty broad brush you're painting all those politicians with, isn't it? Well, I don't know, because it is, because you go in and, and it's not as simple once you're in there. It's not as simple as saying this is what we're going to do. Yeah. No. Well, the, the system is set up with, with conflicts. You know, we're elected as individuals with our own moral compass and value system. We're elected to represent a group of people in a constituency that have their own, you know, so we live in a representative democracy. So is it I think many would many Christians would view let, let's use an example of say there's a, a law uh, with regard to a moral question like abortion or, or just put in whatever issue there and your constituents overwhelmingly support it and you yep. are morally biblically against it. How do you vote? Yep. What's the right way to vote? And I think it's those kind of conflicts are built into systems that paint people into corners. Yep. And some people will agree with them and some people will disagree with them. And some people will think they've compromised the integrity of democracy while others would say they're compromising the integrity of their faith. So, and that's the problem. That's, that's why, uh, that's why we need to be praying for leaders and politicians and hopefully doing more than that, even building friendships and supporting them and, and having the difficult conversations with them. Uh, yep. If, if they're within our sphere of influence, uh, they, they need especially christian mps they need the support of the church oh know. i i agree and i know there are christian mps that get eat alive by the church because of that very thing um you know that they're representing the people not just themselves and so they have a very specific viewpoint and a con personal conviction but if i'm elected by the people i don't get the luxury of just doing what i want Having said that, hopefully that in a campaign and in an election, you would be very able to be, and I'm not sure if this is possible, but that you would have to be very clear on certain issues. I will vote my moral conscience. I cannot. But if people know that and they select you to represent them anyway, knowing that you would not be able to, at least they go in eyes wide open expecting you to be that person. And in yeah. that sense, you can be consistent. But I'm I'm pretty sure there there are probably more parties. In fact, I don't know. I don't know if you would even be able to get a nomination for a, a legislative assembly under those terms, because you'd have to affirm certain things in order to be even considered to be a candidate in our current political climate. So, yeah. But I I, I think again that going back to the hypocrisy statement, um, it. It's not that people are what they are. It's people who are what they say they are not or aren't what they say they are. That's what bothers me. You know, a, a sinner is a sinner. Um, a Philistine is a Philistine. A Christian is a Christian. That, that should be the part that doesn't need to change. I don't have to agree with 
you on your point of view, but be clear about your, what your view is and be consistent. I can live with that. I can live at peace with you. Um, what's hard to live with is in a world where um, where I'm saying one thing in this environment and then doing something else in that environment and being somebody different in the third environment. Now, now people are just lost and, and there's no stability uh, mm -hmm. in that. And I think that's the essence of what God calls us to is integrity. And if you look at the life of Jesus, if you look at the life of Paul, Paul was all that he was. Saul was all he was. And he was all that. And he was that publicly until God changed him. But when God changed him, he was clear about what that change had happened, uh, what change had happened in his life. And he stayed consistent to that calling, too. You know, read his resume about what he endured because of faith. So he was never a hypocrite, but he was all in, but on two very different sides of, of the equation at different yeah. times of his life. Mm -hmm. But let's be consistent with, you know, who, who we say we are. Yeah. No, no, no double standards. Uh, Jessica votes that you should just stay off <laughs> social media. <laughs> no surprise there, Jess. <laughs> well, I said the same thing. You've gone this long. You might as well just stay clear. Yeah. It's mostly just people arguing and pictures of food and mm -hmm. people's pets. Well, uh, I'm once in a, I am once in a while a morning show with. Yeah, that's right. I, I will say I will say this and vote for social media that you done well. Uh, and, and it's hard cause you really have to take ownership of like how, what you're curating your social media experience to be. Um, but I, I think one of the great benefits is, is that connectivity and, uh, awareness of what's going on, like in our community and our province and our nation and globally. Uh, so there is that there, there is a sense of like, when you're on social media, you can like kind of have a sense of the heartbeat of what's going on and in the issues people are wrestling with but at the same time you can also just stay off and let like steve are you telling me that the internet and social media is a source of truth <laughs> that's not the impression <laughs> i have lance that's that's uh <laughs> that, that's a loaded question <laughs> i know You've been it's asking a, it's a source. <laughs> it's certainly a source of um, what people are thinking and feeling, which can be very important at times. Yeah. But you can also just let us filter what's going on. <laughs> <with you. laughs> that's that's part yeah. of our job, isn't it? I, I think I, I think it brings up an interesting point with every influence in life. There's news, there's media, there's TV, there's, you know, entertainment industry, there's newspapers and books and and even music. Um, I think what we want to ask is what's the impact of these things on me? Is it helpful? Is it needful? Mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you have to understand the questions that are being asked before you can find God's answer. So, so in a sense, I would agree with you, Lance, that you have to know where people are at and what they're thinking, what yeah. the zeitgeist of a culture is. Uh, but, um, but the question would be, uh, does the outcome serve a purpose that is of high enough a priority that I should invest that time? Um, and <laughs> for the most part, I think that if I have to spend 15 hours a week in social media to glean an hour's worth of value. That's a poor investment of time <laughs> and energy. And, and it may also provoke me that the scripture talks about eye gates. And I think we have ear gates as well. Uh, guard, guard what goes in and, and so on. Yeah. Um, most of what I hear suggests to me that, uh, that that information is probably available in other forms, uh, more distilled forms, more clarified forms. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's a really uh, good point that the uh, t investment of time versus uh, the amount, the quality you get out of it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the ratio that's always. Yeah. I said at the beginning, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Lance. Um, I, I said at the beginning of, of COVID, not long into it, um, I can 
I can tell within a few sentences where people are investing their time, whether it's in the word, whether it's in the Lord, whether it's in fellowship or whether it's on the internet uh, because of the content. And I think that anybody who thinks that sifting through all of that is, is super helpful and that it's not influencing the way you think and what your mind is focused on and ultimately your faith and your perception of God, your perception of the church and so on. Anybody who invests that kind of time uh, on the internet and reading that material from all those sources, and I'm not afraid of people's other claims of truth and so on, but I, I know people in our church who are influenced by it. I can hear it in their language. I can see it in their faith. I can see that it's eroding certain aspects of the core beliefs of who they've been and what they understand. Mm. And, and that's just as an observer from the outside. Mm. Now, that's not true of everybody who's on it, but for those who are on it and that is being influenced, it's just obvious as if you smell a manure on a farmer that you can tell he's been in the barn. Mm. You can smell it. You can see it. And you smell it because you're not in it every day. You don't especially get used to it. When, yeah, especially when you're not in the burn yourself, right? That's right. Or sm a smoker, right? You can you can smell smoke on people who, if they live in a household with smokers or in an office where people smoke, it it gets into your clothes. It it permeates, you know, your environment. And and uh, we would we would do well uh, to consider the influences and recognize and be honest. There is no way that you are objectively going to filter out all of the negative influences of these conversations, which is, by the way, another reason we need to be in community and have discussions and groups like this, because it's other people who notice the changes in us before we're aware of the changes in our own thinking. And uh, and it's others who can help balance the perspectives that we're hearing. And so I know that there are people who who need that, but don't want it. Now, mm -hmm. There you go. Cool. There's your midweek. There's your midweek thought right there. It's your right. Bible study right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jeanette's, thank you for your insights. She's <laughs> laughed a lot. Great <laughs> glimpse into the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> right, right. I think she misspelled that's moth. <laughs> Blessings to CFA. Jeanette, God bless you. Don't know who this, uh, uh, people going through our community group, we don't always see their name unless they uh, mm -hmm. accept uh, StreamYard to have access to that. But this user, uh, social media piece is such a personal question. It isn't good or bad necessarily, really depends on what you make it. I vote for trying it. It's a fascinating studying of people and how to love people in different capacities, at least for me. It has also taught me a ton about myself as well, which I've appreciated. I do se second the recommendation being very particular and clear about your plan to be on it. If you do try to, no shame in trying and deciding to shut it. Shut um, it I think. Yeah, so I'm not shocked to see who, who posted that's, that. That's Kelsey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, and Kelsey. I've said before, Kelsey's social media posts are, are, are like solid it's a highlight on my social media yeah. feed yeah well, just, just keep in mind what we said about professions earlier you know there needs to be salt and light in social yeah. media world too and some yeah. people can do it yeah it, it's uh, the would, intentionality right i would say some people can't though you know some people can't they get caught up i'm a little worried about that competitiveness that need to correct or be right and wrong and to argue with people and, and I, you know, I, I have a living illustration right here at, at the church every day. I'm just afraid to become cynical. You know, I'm just worried about being coming negative and cynical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you just got a living example just up the hall from you every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like, I like you off of social media, Glenn, because yeah. when I'm on social media, like, and I'm, I don't really surf. I'm mostly, um, I, I'm very like particular in what I go. I, I'm actually more of a Googler. Like I Google topics and issues and read a bunch of stuff and, and see, I don't, I don't like scroll TikTok and watch random videos. 
because yeah, you have to wade through just a lot. Um, and and so often with those things, it is your experience is very tailored for you as, oh, you watched, you you said Harry Potter out loud near your phone. We're going to show you all the Harry Potter stuff people do. And you're like, stop showing me Harry Potter stuff. Yeah. Um, but, dog food. And dog, yeah, dog food. I yeah, had dog, dog food ads for a while. <laughs> but, Karen and I talked about dog food. <laughs> yeah, but I, I like I like knowing, you know, when I go and talk to Glenn, he has no idea. He, this, you know, he's just, you can talk to him and he's, objective clueless i think is the word you're looking for <laughs> <laughs> joy is saying you kids are great oh <laughs> nice to see you today pg Love you too, joy i think joy is great do you know that, that god gave joy to the world joy to the world. <laughs> you go oh. hey listen the puns have started it's time to shut this thing down that's yeah. We had the. <laughs> uh, I need a Coke. <laughs> hey, that's that's one thing Pastor Glenn thoroughly enjoys is the uh, the dad joke stuff, because he's he might say he doesn't really enjoy it, but he enjoys it. Yeah, I enjoy right. somebody who's good at it. <laughs> But you know what? I, I like I like laughing. I, I think people yeah. are funny. I think even bad humor is funny, even if it's just because it's so bad. But oh. that's, a, that's a uniqueness. Listen, bad humor sincerely presented. That can be hilarious. It is. It is. You know, if, if we're not if we're not finding joy, joy in life and if we can't have some fun together, we don't understand what the strength of what we have inside you know, if, if, if we're if we're lost in fear and and we can't laugh and have fun and laugh at ourselves, you know, I mean, the Bible says we're all broken. You know, so when we point those things out and see those things and talk about them and we can can I use the word normalize? We normalize the conversation about S Steve being cynical and and uh, Lance on the Internet and and Glenn being clueless. Uh, those are all sort of half truths, partial realities. And and I appreciate a community of people wherein we don't take ourselves so seriously that we can't have some fun. At the same time, we don't diminish the fact that we have a calling we want to live up to, and and we need each other. And so, yeah. so I love I love the serious side of people, the relationship side, the beauty of what God's put in them. But man, if we're not having fun while we're doing it, we've 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 missed it. We've missed it. And Joy is saying. Go out with joy. <laughs> You're fishing for a lunch invitation. It's That's what we call it. Isaiah 55 12. Pretty, pretty soon, Joy. Pretty soon. <laughs> All We're right. There, everybody. Hang in there. Let's awesome. end this. <laughs> let's let's say goodbye to everybody. We'll see yep. some of you on this Sunday and the big announcement of coming of restrictions coming to an end here in alberta so. july 4th everything's going to be different better mm -hmm. tune do we, in do we get to tease that announcement here do we get tune to in and and find out announcements tune coming in. this weekend yeah. tune in and find out what's going to happen on july 4th it's not and it's not a celebration of america <laughs> no <laughs> not that we hate America. You know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know, Lance. I'm not sure what you mean. I That seems a little loaded. <laughs> he, he means he's trying to say goodbye because he's starting to dig holes for himself here now. Okay. <laughs> we better go. Hey, Steve, we... I think he's been on social media. Yeah. Before <laughs> we critique nations uh, and all that, let's end. <clears throat> Okay, thanks for watching. Those of you who watch later and comment, uh, we do try to check back. Uh, so yeah, keep asking Glenn questions, and we'll we'll tell them them at the office here. And uh, yeah, you can find out more things. I was hoping for more questions about like like what do you do to relax, let down your hair, and who are you wearing these days? And who you know, are you wearing? Thing. Yeah, but wearing head. There you go. <laughs> all right thank you for watching thanks glenn for joining us it was a pleasure lots of fun yeah all right we'll see you all hey, next, next time